build material properties and characterization. Unlike conventional manufacturing, additive manufacturing processes metal in a completely different manner. This result in a different material compared to the conventional wrought material of the same alloy composition. In order to design and manufacture parts using additive, it is important to establish minimal mechanical properties of the built material. Every built material needs to be characterized for different thermophysical and mechanical properties which support the design and analysis of the part being built. Moreover, the layer upon layer fashion of additive manufacturing induces anisotropy in the built parts. Unlike isotropic materials, properties of additively manufactured material changes with the direction. For bulk built material, an isotropy is generally within 5 to 10% across three directions. The anisotropy relatively increases further in complex thin geometries such as lattices. Mechanical properties such as Young's modulus, yield strength, ultimate tensile strength, endurance strength, are affected by the build orientation and the process induced anisotropy and porosities. Material characterization in metal powder bed fusion processes is a massive exercise. To establish temperature dependent tensile, Fatigue and creep properties in different orientations requires hundreds of specimen and day testing. Material characterization testing may also include testing of specimen, with different post-build, heat and surface treatment conditions, to analyze their effect on final properties. In addition to bulk material properties, thin specimen are built and tested, to characterize thin material geometries, for applications such as heat exchangers. Note. Material properties of the additively built part depends upon the powder and process parameters, build orientation and the machine platform used. Unlike wrought materials, the standard material data for additively built materials is not available. Material properties may slightly vary from one machine, manufacturer to another, even when powder and process parameters are similar. Therefore, Minimal material properties are usually established and used in the design process taking into account different variables. Prior to testing, pedigree information of the test specimen built needs to be logged. Pedigree information comprises Additive machine, printer used, year of manufacture, serial number etc. Powder layer thickness employed Powder supplier, source and material certificate. Powder history, virgin, recycling, number of uses, etc. Process parameters used, spot diameter, energy density, build orientation, etc. Hatch and contour strategies and settings. Build plate test specimen map. Heat treatment certificate. Other post-processing details such as machining, polishing etc. Note, in some machines such as multi-laser, material properties of the specimen may vary slightly depending on its position on the base plate. This variation is attributed to multiple lasers acting in tandem and also the variation of argon gas flow, distribution across the base plate surface and associated process emissions. Read additional reading section on material characterization to understand the effect of build orientation and anisotropy. Fatigue properties, metal PBF material versus cast, versus rod material. Effect of post-processing. Effect of different machines and manufacturers. Post-processing, metrology and inspection. The part quality is a function of powder properties and process parameters. The quality of the powder bed fusion part is assessed in terms of porosity, defects, residual stresses and distortion, material microstructure, physical and mechanical properties, dimensional accuracy and tolerances, surface roughness. In addition to powder and in process parameters, Post-processing of powder bed fusion parts is critical to achieve the required part quality and meet the design specifications. 
post processes and workflow. The general post process steps are powder removal, heat treatment for stress relief and porosity, part and support structure removal, surface finishing, heat treatment to improve mechanical properties, powder removal. Powder removal is the first post process operation where powder surrounding the built part is removed using compressed air and or bead blasting. Removal of powder trapped in internal cavities and lattices can be more challenging and may require bespoke machines, vibration shakers to extract this powder. Simultaneous rotation and controlled vibration releases powder trapped in cavities and internal channels. Note. All the powder must be removed prior to any heat treatment, because the loose powder will sinter and fuse to internal surfaces during the heat treatment cycle. Holes are sometimes specifically created in the part designed for powder removal, and later get plugged using post-processing operations such as welding. This is common for applications such as heat exchangers which have lattice structures and internal cavities. Heat treatment for stress relief and porosity. To relieve this internal stresses within the part, stress relief heat treatment is required. This involves heating the part to a specified temperature, soaking at that temperature for a specified time and then gradual slow cooling to ambient temperature. This is to be performed prior to part removal from the base plate to minimize distortion. Similarly, Annealing is used to remove mechanical stresses generated during the process. Note Stress relief heat treatment usually does not affect microstructure and material hardness. For highly reactive materials such as titanium, stress relief and annealing is carried out using vacuum furnaces. Heaping The hot isostatic pressing applies a high isostatic uniform in all directions, pressure up to 200 megapascals, at a specified high temperature up to 2000 degrees Celsius, for a specified duration, which is followed by controlled cooling to the ambient. The applied pressure and heat removes internal microporosities within the part. Heaping process significantly improves fatigue life, fracture toughness and creep strength and ductility of the part. Note. Heaping is an expensive process especially when it needs to be performed along with the base plate. Recent advancements in hip technology enable heaping along with other heat treatments, such as stress relief, annealing and solution heat treatment as a single operation. However, this increases the duration of hip cycle and may turn out to be more expensive. Part and Support Structure Removal the parts and supports can usually be removed from the base plate, using simple hand tools, or band saw. For larger parts with multiple supports, wire electro discharge machining is used, to separate the base plate. Deposits from support structures usually ground away and smoothened with, Dremel tool. Note. Part and the support structure are usually removed from the base plate after stress relief heat treatment to minimize distortion. However, this requires larger furnaces, and also makes the powder removal more cumbersome, especially for parts with internal cavities and lattices. Surface Finishing There are various different mechanical and chemical methods to improve the surface finish of a built parts. Some of these methods are CNC machining Conventional CNC machining is primarily used for machining key features and interfaces of the part. Abrasive flow machining This process uses an abrasive flow media or slurry at high pressures to improve surface finish. The process controls the media, slurry flow rate, abrasive particle size, pressure, volume and temperature of the material which is forced through the part. Note process requires bespoke tooling and can only be used with parts which can sustain the pressure. Grit, Sandblasting 
In this process, a stream of abrasive material is propelled against the surface of the part under pressure. Short peening. This is similar to grid blasting except resulting in plastic deformation of the part locally. Process induces compressive stresses on the part surfaces and improves the fatigue life. Short peening uses steel balls, glass, ceramic beads to impart compressive forces on the part surfaces. Note. Process is relatively cleaner with less material removed and less dust. Vibratory finishing. The process comprises vibratory tumbler and abrasive media. Part is submerged in the tumbler filled with the abrasive media. The vibratory forces result in rubbing action of abrasive media with the part surfaces. Electro polishing. The part is immersed in the electrolyte solution and connected to the DC power supply. The positive terminal of the power supply acts as anode and the negative terminal acts as cathode. The current passes from anode to cathode result in the oxidation of the metal surface, which gets deposited on the cathode. Heat treatments for mechanical properties. Solution heat treatment followed by aging is used to improve mechanical properties of the material such as material strength and ductility. Solution treatment is where material is heated to a suitable temperature, holding it at that temperature long enough to cause one or more constituents to enter into a solid solution, and then cooling it rapidly enough to hold these constituents in solution. This improves the hardness and strength of the material, but the brittleness increases too simultaneously. Subsequently, Precipitation heat treatments allow controlled release of these constituents either naturally, at room temperature, or artificially, at higher temperatures. Note. Aging or precipitation hardening is mostly used to increase the yield strength of ductile metals. Metrology and inspection. Metrology and inspection of additive parts is essential too. Establish whether the final part is fit for purpose in terms of surface finish, dimensional tolerances and design specified functionality. Identify defects and allow additional post-processing to rectify them. Reduce scrap and wastage. Give customers and certification authorities confidence in the final part. Note. Refer to additional reading material section on standards and certification. The advantage of additive manufacturing, to create complex geometry parts, makes it challenging for metrology and inspection technology and available techniques to, measure and identify defects. Metrology and inspection comprises several standard techniques. Metrology for additive parts involves microscopic hardness measurements. Surface roughness measurements using profilometers. Coordinate measuring machines to check dimensional accuracy and tolerances. Laser and light scanning methods, where scanned part data is overlapped and compared with the original CAD model to measure geometrical accuracy, tolerances and distortions. There are several non-destructive testing techniques being explored, such as photography or thermography, ultrasonic testing, resonance testing, eddy current and X-ray computer tomography. However 3D computed thermography is appeared to be the most powerful and widely used non-destructive testing technique for inspecting additive parts. Tomography uses multiple views obtained by rotating the part. The different views enable the absorption of each volumetric element to be rebuilt as a 3D image. The generated 3D image can then be viewed in 3D or sliced into 2D images as required to identify porosities and defects within the part. X-ray 3D computer tomography provides detailed 3D information which is independent of geometric complexity. Images can be processed and used to identify porosities and defects along with dimensional accuracy. Note. There are limitations to 3D tomography such as enclosure space, part size, part rotation long cycle times and high cost. Moreover, the data generated is huge and requires extensive data processing. Also, there are no defined inspection standards for additive parts.
real-time monitoring of additive manufacturing part build, using optical tomography, has been explored by additive manufacturing system manufacturers to reduce quality assurance cost. Artificial intelligence and machine learning are being explored with real-time monitoring to be able to rectify defects by altering process parameters in real-time.